to evaluate Chief. Um, what's your evaluation, and will he be back next year? Um, as soon as I sort through that, I'll give you an answer on that. At this point, he's our head coach, and if something changes, I'll let you guys know. At this point, the process going on with, you know, we're going to evaluate everything, as I said, and at this point, the decision hasn't been made. Brad, are you waiting to see if uh, other people become available to make that a part of your ballot evaluation? No. This is singular in itself. Um, so there's there's no waiting around to see if someone comes available or or what else is out there. No, not part of the equation. Did you what's, the, what's the wait? You? What's the wait? You're a pretty sharp guy. I mean, you you know at the end of the season you're out of the playoffs. The 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 wait is that I'm going to be methodical. I want to make the right decision. I'm not going to make a quick decision to appease people or to follow along what is supposed to be done. I'm going to do everything. I can to be uh, uh, to do the due diligence that's appropriate to make the decision. And once I get there, then then we'll we'll let people know. I'm not going to make a hasty decision and and uh, look back and regret it. I'm going to do everything I can to gather all the information out there and make the right decision. That goes for a lot of decisions we have to make. Do you have a timetable where that decision mm -hmm. would you like to have it made? And well, I, I'll, I'd like to make it as soon as possible in fairness to the chief. Um, so, yeah, again, I'm working at it, and as soon as we get there, we'll... Should, should, you guys, should, you meet should it be a clear-cut decision, though, for you? I mean, you, know, you guys, in a sense, were eliminated a couple of weeks ago. Shouldn't it be a clear-cut decision whether or not... Every, you coach or not every, every, everybody operates differently. I'm not a knee-jerk type of a guy. I typically go through a process before making decisions rather than make hasty decisions, so I guess for some people that's the way to go. For me, it's not. Did you guys talk yesterday? Uh, we talked on sun Sunday, I think it was. Sunday? Yeah. Have, have you expressed to him the same thing you just expressed to us, that it's going to take time? And what, how did yes. He was, he was fine with it. What are the complicating factors in your eyes? Like, what are some of the things that, as you go through this process, you're looking at? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to get into the details. I mean, it's essentially an evaluation of of the job he did, but I'm not going to get into the details. What are the reasons for and Frank didn't agree on a lineup decision? Um, no, th those are his decisions. As a manager, you talk to your coach about what he's thinking, but I never told him once to who to put in, who not to put in. We talk about things. We're both hockey people. We have a sense for the team, so we talk about things more. In a, but in in the end, he goes down with his coaches' huddles, and they make decisions. That's that. I mean, that's his job. I don't, I don't want to coach, and I'm not one of those guys who um, has a big influence on on the lineup. I don't, I don't believe in that. Of the problem about the sort of rigid roles that certain players were asked to play this year. I mean. When you hear a guy like Sean Couturier come out yesterday or two days ago and say that he doesn't want to be known <coughs> as, as, a, as a shutdown player, Does, what's your reaction to that? I'm, I'm thrilled. Right. We don't want him to be a shutdown player either. We want him to be both. But, but we, want, we want him to be a 200-foot player. Mm -hmm. That's how you win. That's how you win. You win championships, you win playoff series, you make the playoffs with 200-foot players. Sean Couturier is a good two-way player. Sean Couturier is also 22 years old. Be really careful. Be really, really careful. Do we want more from him? Yeah. Does he want more from himself? Yeah. Uh, is he going to be in more offensive roles as we move forward? It's a coach's decision, but I, I would suspect he will. Don't forget, I think Coots had the most breakaways on our team. Like, he did a lot of good things. Did he, did he play where we hope? Probably not quite, but it's not like Sean had a disastrous year. When you, when you get a, a, a big guy who's a smart player, who's gifted offensively, and a shutdown guy, you really have something. Like we, we really like Coots, and again, he's a, he's, he's a kid. He's, he's, a, he's a kid, he's a boy, and it's like, I'm not, am I disappointed in his year? Yeah. Could he have had a better year? Probably, but again, he's 22 years old. I mean, he could be a freshman coming out of college 
or maybe not he could a junior year of college like he's a he's a young guy he's been around for a while so we tend to want to you know expect and push and everything else and that's part of our job but be really careful there sometimes patience is uh well, is needed though is more about his usage i mean because we then asked craig he said sean says i'd like to you know be used in a more offensive <coughs> role if possible or perhaps more balanced and craig's response to us on monday was he's got to learn to start to score from the defensive zone which seems sort of like a catch-22 when you when Craig has been pretty critical, at least, in terms of Sean's offensive production. And it seems like, it's like, how do you ask to get more out of a player offensively when all of his, the bulk of his own starts are in his own end? Well, what did he get, 30, 39 points? Yeah. I mean, he actually did produce. I mean, he's, he's 22 years old, and he got, I think it was 39 points. That's, that's pretty good. And, yeah, starting the D zone, which, I mean, if you're... Uh, if you're a two-way player, you're going to start in both zones. Obviously, you know, Claude's an offensive guy. He's probably going to start. And it also, it, it, it's, it's, you're looking at, you know, like a single entity there, Coots. Well, he's probably our best defensive center. Okay, that's fair to say. Offensively, he produced, but not at a high rate. So you're going to use him a certain amount in the defensive zone, right? And if we have someone else come up that maybe, Maybe next year, maybe Bell. I'm not, I'm not the coach, and that's why I, I, I struggle a little bit answering your question. But maybe Bellamar takes more of those. Those He's two guys, they, they, they came on late in the year, but, but Belly came into the year and he was a, kind of an unknown. He hadn't played in the NHL, and as the year went on, he got better and better and better. So I would assume he's probably going to take more of that next year. But Coots is probably always going to take some certain amount of defensive draws. I mean, depending on the building and everything else, the matchups. I mean, there's a lot more that goes on there than just just putting Sean out in the offensive zone. I mean, there's matchups. There's, there's, you got to put your guys out first on the road. I mean, there's a lot of little things that go through a coach's mind, and there's reasons that they do things. I said, to be honest, I've heard some things. Um, I sat with Vinny and... Um, uh, uh, I know I heard him and Chief couldn't survive or something like that. I don't know. That's, that's I don't know. That's you know what, Vinny. It hasn't worked. It hasn't worked for them. It hasn't worked for us. So where we go from here, quite frankly, I, I I don't know. I really don't. Well, you know, we have an obligation to him, obviously, and we'll fulfill our obligation. But that's. Do you guys consider a buy? No. Where does Vinny stand, though? I mean, you talk about the cart and the horse. I mean, no one's pretending that Vinny was the player he was five years ago. But at the same time, he's probably, he could be closer to the 20-goal scorer that he showed last year rather than his production this year. Where do you see that stand? Is it more where he was placed, or is it more that Vinny didn't show enough to be placed any higher? Well, you look and you say, okay, he was on the fourth line. Well, he was with two pretty good players there. I mean, Belly's, Belly's a pretty good player. He makes plays. I think Vinny had chances to score, and at times he didn't score. And Vinny's obviously a goal scorer. So you can sit and you say, well, he should have been played higher because he would have scored more. But if he started to score more, maybe he would have gone higher in the lineup. So it's the cart and horse thing. I mean, it's, it's, it's Vinny, Vinny needs to be, he, he needs to be productive. He needs to produce to, to help our team win. And Craig's got one obligation, put the best lineup on the ice that he sees fit every night. So you mentioned that you were going to buy him out. And I know that last year like, his agent <coughs> was given permission to see the trade. So how does that situation get resolved? I don't know. I don't know. The position that he was placed in, like physical center is supposed to record, right wing is supposed to center, did that factor in at all? Well, he... My understanding when he came here, I wasn't here, but he, he was willing to play or want, would would play either center or right wing. So I don't. I mean, Vinny's a shooter, and if he's on the right side, that's a one timer for him. If you're a scorer, you're licking your chops. So I, I mean, he's more he's more comfortable in in the middle, but so are a lot of guys. If you asked uh, Chris Vandevelde, he'd probably say I'm more comfortable in the middle too. I played the middle my whole life. But I'm on almost every team, you have more centers. I don't know if you guys saw the World Championship team for Canada, but I think they have 12 forwards. I want to say nine of them are centermen. 
your best players typically are centermen. So as they come up into the, the NHL, some of them got to move to the wing. That's just that's the way it works. Well, here's what I say to that. Like the one thing that, like our team has sort of been turned over to, you know, G and Jake and Wayne Simmons. And I can tell you, Wayne Simmons took a huge jump this year in terms of leadership. Jake Voracek took a huge jump. I think Mace took a huge jump. But the fact of the matter is our leadership is young. It needs to get better. It needs to grow from within. I can tell you things that those guys are, are talking about now are a lot different than they were talking about last summer. So um, to add a guy that's, that's you know, 35 years old and a, a, a so-called leader, and I think all of us older players as you go through it, the older you get, the less your role becomes, the less you lead. That's reality. So we expect our players to, to become better leaders. They have. They've showed a lot of growth, and I believe they'll continue to show a lot of growth. The first thing in leadership is going out in that rink every day, every practice, every drill, every game, and playing hard. And if you look at the guys I just mentioned, Simmer, Jake, and G, they do that. That's the first part. You can't lead without that. I think Kimo... He, he's been around a long time. He's a great player, and he's a great leader. And I think probably the biggest thing with him, and we do need to get better at this as a group, is he's a calming influence. He puts things into perspective rather than, you know, guys kind of get, you lose four or five guy, games in a row, and guys kind of get a little bit antsy and stuff. And Kim was like, okay, boys, let's, let's just settle down here. Let's go win the next game. We can get better at that. But again, our guys are younger. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're building something here. We, we've got top players, and, and I believe that in the next two or three years, um, our, you won't be talking about our leadership. I really believe it. Like I said, the growth over the last year, if we get that again next year, um, you can't, like I said, you can't go out and sign three or four older guys and expect they're going to lead your team. A guy comes in here new, uh, you know, Nick Schultz comes on in here new this year. Nick is a leader on our team. He, but the first little while, you're sort of, feeling things out. You don't want to walk in and bust the door down. It's not Nick's nature either. He's more of a quiet leader. But we, we've got Mark Streit is <coughs> a, a, a good older you know, leader. So leadership is maybe average on our team, and we need, to, we need to bump it up. And we will do things between now and the start of the season to assist our guys. We'll so come up with things that... Things like going on the road and not being able to win. Players down there the other day accusing themselves of panicking when they have a two goal lead on the road and the other team scores one and they panic. Well, Is that all on if, if, if you. If, I mean, if, if you're talking to one person who's saying we panic, I think in critical situations, in, in critical situations this year, I think we can get better. That is leadership, for sure. So are we going to get better there? Yes, we are. Our, our guys are going to become better leaders. We will do things this summer to, like I said, assist them becoming better leaders. But I don't think our leadership is as bad as people want to make it out to be. I just mentioned, like, like Nick Schultz, you guys watch him every game. Leadership is going out there every night and playing hard and playing for the team. Does anybody embody that more than Nick Schultz? I don't think so. Mark Streit, he's a leader. He's been around. Um, and like I said, our young guys are they are coming to that age where th they're going to become top leaders here. There's no doubt in my mind. Claude Giroux is going to be a top leader. Jake Voracek is going to be a top leader. Wayne Simmons is going to be a top leader. You know, in time, I think Coots and Braden might be a little bit young for that, but in time, they are too. It doesn't just happen overnight. You know, there's, there's a guy like Bob Clark who is a born leader. But I'm going to tell you right now, they are far and few between. And if you think you can go out and find a Bob Clark, I got news for you. They're hard. Ed Snyder made comments, some comments a few weeks ago that suggested uh, being methodical is not his cup of tea. How do you, how do you deal with that? Well, I, I'll tell you guys this again. Our relationship is phenomenal. I, I'd like to know exactly what he said 
that isn't on the same page as the things that I've said because I, I, haven't, I haven't seen it, I haven't heard it. So anybody who thinks there's something there, I, I, I'm confused. So you think, do you think this team can compete for a Stanley Cup next season? And the expectation will be that they I, I, You go into every season trying to compete for the Stanley Cup. To win a Stanley Cup, you have to make the playoffs. Our goal next year is to make the playoffs. You know, I've said this, I'll say it, I'll say it now, I'll say it again. If we can do something with our personnel to be better in October, we will do it without question, assuming it's not sacrificing our future. We're not going to trade young players. We're not going to trade picks as a rule. But if we can do something free agent, trade, something along those lines, we will absolutely do it. My job right now is to keep our future going, keep our picks, draft well, but also make our team better in October. I don't like sitting here today. I'd much rather be sitting here in two months. So we're not happy with where we're at. We're very disappointed. Um, and we're going to do everything we can to get better for October. Can we compete for a Stanley Cup next year? I guess given the Flyers made it on the last day on, in uh, 2010 in a shootout, squeaked in, went to the finals. I mean, yeah, you get in the playoffs, anything's possible. Any of the 16 teams right now can, can win the Stanley Cup. Yeah, but the effort to win, because I'm too bad you said, the effort to <clears> win the Stanley Cup sometimes requires sacrifices that you're saying you're unwilling to make. So the question then is, is this team poised to do everything you <coughs> can possible to win the Stanley Cup next year? And I think your answer with, is no. With, no well, we're not... <laughs> <laughs> we we are not gonna we are not gonna throw away our future to try and win the Stanley Cup next year. I can assure you of that. Are we gonna try and win the Stanley Cup? Yes, yes we are, along with the 29 other teams. But we are not going to trade top young players for 29, 30 year olds to try to take a one year run at the cup. That is not going to happen.